Scott, what do you think? Uh, I, I mean, I'm not sure Kinzinger and Cheney would wear uh, that title as being anti-Trump uh, as anything other than a badge of honor. I mean, they are anti-Trump. They've made no bones about it, and they don't think Trump is... Uh, good for the future of the Republican Party. I suspect they don't think uh, he should be nominated again. And so, you know, as a practical day-to-day -day matter, uh, they are anti-Trump. Uh, and and I, don't know, I don't know that they would oppose that. I mean, the reality is that the practical reality is, is that Trump is the defining issue in the party right now. You are, as Amanda pointed out fairly, I think, defined about whether you support Trump or you don't support Trump. I do think, though, as we move into the future, these labels, I mean, depending on what Trump does, are going to be less important because people are going to want to define the party around, you know, uh, can we win the White House again, who's going to be the nominee, and, and so on and so forth. But as we sit here today, one of the big issues, uh, I think, roiling the party, uh, and Melanie had some great reporting on this, is are we going to play ball with Pelosi on this commission and the people getting appointed? And it really has, I think, more to do uh, with, with Pelosi being able to tell uh, Kevin McCarthy, what she's going to do, and Republicans not wanting to give her any of that authority. So, I mean, there's a lot of issues being conflated here. Uh, but at the end of the day, as we sit here today, fair or unfair, and for better or worse, everything tends to be defined by Trump. <laughs> and I'm not sure that's great for the party moving forward, but that's a practical matter. Let's try to engage in some deconflation, which is, uh, if it's not a word, I just invented it. <laughs> yeah. um, I want to talk about that issue with the committees here. And, and Melanie Zeno is reporting the idea that there are Republicans in the conference now that want to punish Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger for, for being on that select committee. Scott. Um, do you think it's a good idea to pull other committee assignments from the likes of Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger? No, th this would be a horrific idea, uh, and I cannot begin to imagine that leadership would entertain it. Uh, they may not like what's happening with the January 6th commission. They may not like the way it's played out. But at, at some juncture, this idea that we're on a constant purge. You know, I feel like the Republican Party has been on a 10, 12-year mission where people sort of get control of it, and they think their only mission in politics is to purge the people they hate. It's the first move. You know, Ted Cruz used to run around trying to purge the rhinos. Now the Trump people try to purge, you know, the anti-Trump people. At some juncture, we're all Republicans. These are Republicans elected by their districts. They've done a good job representing their districts. They do a good job on their committees. There's no reason to punish them. This would further divide the party, further hurt the party, and I think really further hurt the institution of the House. So please don't do that, Kevin McCarthy. Scott? Well, I, I think as a, as a realistic matter, you're going to have a number of candidates get elected in 2022 who support Trump. Uh, you're going to have a lot of people using uh, their, their uh, support of Trump in their primaries. It's likely going to mean that they're going to get their nominations. Where, where the rubber really hits the road, of course, is in 2024. I actually think these issues may not matter all that much to whether we win the House. I think we will. But in 2024, if the Republican Party uh, cannot stand up and say, uh, we're not going to nominate Trump. I think Trump would be a definite loser, most likely a loser. But if we can't stand up and say uh, we've got ideas for the country that have nothing to do with relitigating 2020 and, and saying January 6th was a fine idea, we are probably going to lose the next election. So I think the, the electoral reality is, is that 22 and 24 are really different animals. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and how you uh, 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 triangulate on these issues you know, may be different depending on which race you run in. Good politics, Scott. I mean, I know the former president was upset that the women's national team didn't go to the White House after they won the World Cup, but rooting against America at the Olympics? Yeah, this is a famous uh, Donald Trump grudge holding. He, uh, he's been mad at them for quite some time, and uh, when they lost, I, I'm not surprised he took this uh, chance to get back at them. It's one of the most unfortunate traits uh, that he has, and uh, I think we should cheer for all the American teams. I hope they can keep winning. Uh, I mean, also, I would just say, he, you know, I think he thinks one of the greatest achievements of his presidency was being on top of the NFL kneeling controversy, and I think he, he's always constantly looking into sports for stories like this, and this one, obviously, there's great parallels, and so I, I, I think when he sees them, he can't resist, even when it means rooting against his own country, which pro probably in the long run isn't, isn't great politics. The story of the last <laughs> week was Tom Brady going to the White House with Joe Biden, and how many people uh, in, in, you know, my sports world were like, oh, oh my God. That one, that one, you, you know that, you know that one cut, you know that one cut deep. That, that was a, that was a deeper cut for him than, uh, <laughs> than any, any political barb, you know it. Yeah.